I, uh, this is a, a weird story for me to tell, given that I'm, you know, the place I am in my life, I'm very happily married, got two daughters, two stepdaughters, and then a, a five-month-old son, Poops, we call him. <laughs> that would be, that'd be your nickname, too, if you sold your diaper ten times a day. He's, uh, so we're, I'm like, my mind is in a different place, but this is definitely a chapter that, uh, that, that uh, had a real imprint on my life. Uh, it goes back to when I was in McGill in the 90s, uh, I had a full head of hair. I was a gym enthusiast. I had abs. <laughs> I had one ab. It was one. The ladies treated it with the respect that six would have deserved. That's what I'm trying to say. I was very, I was a different person and I was uh, in the prime of my life. And uh, I actually had a crush on a girl named Sabrina. And I had a crush on this girl and I was deep, deep into the friend zone. Maybe like a day <laughs> away from being called just like my little brother or something <laughs> horrifying, like just like days away from that. And then this girl, Tina, we'll call her Tina because that was her name. Uh, that was not her name. That, uh, she expressed interest in me and um, you know, I've had, there's, but Sabrina, Tina, so you know when you have like a craving for pizza and somebody offers you sushi and you're like, no thanks, I'm not, what are you, I'm really interested in pizza. <laughs> but then three days later, you're like, what am I, an idiot? Sushi, oh my God, I love sushi. <laughs> it is so healthy for me, it is exotic. And it probably doesn't have borderline personality disorder. That's another <laughs> thing. Anyway. So, uh, basically, Pizza, we were in a bad, you know, I was, in, I was recognizing that this is not going to go anywhere. And then, you know, Sushi literally said to me, she had even said to me, said, I know that you're interested in Sabrina, um, and I know you're trying to see that through. I'll just wait here. I mean, I'm not interested in uh, going out with a man or any man. I'm, I'm just interested in you. And I was like, wow, that is ridiculously sweet. And I think right after that comment... She got me with that one. She, I was like, well, that's really nice. That's a lot nicer than this person who I'm, who's like shoes I'm practically tying on the street. So I was, <laughs> we, with a, in the spirit of openness, you know, I, I started down this, uh, this, this road with this girl, Tina, and it was, uh, it was a wonderful relationship. In the end, it wound up being three years, and there, there was, it was mostly wonderful. Um, it started off... Um, with a little bit of fear. It was, uh, her, her father was a very frightening guy. So the two things you should know about her is that, uh, one, she came from a Sikh slash Hindu household, uh, and I don't, I come from a Muslim household, and she was very close to her sister. These are two important things in her life. Had I seen the signs of, we would have never had this relationship. Doesn't matter, it happened, and that's fine. Uh, but she, uh, she had this father who was, he was a small guy, but he was very frightening for some reason. The, he had a, a, a legend. I actually knew somebody who she had dated. I knew of this guy, and he had told my friends how frightening he was. When he met him, he was a very small guy, but he did carry this sort of, you know, terrifying thing. The first time we went over there for dinner, we went as a group of six friends. I basically took six decoys with me. <laughs> so that I would not be recognized as the boyfriend. Because when you're an Indian, Pakistani boy ba background, you're in your 20s, early 20s, you should not be dating, period. Never mind dating someone from another uh, religion. You know, for many families, it's horrifying. So I went there and I spent literally about 75% of the night on the toilet that night, just because, and I've got a lockbox of a stomach, but somehow <laughs> he penetrated it and my nerves, <laughs> I could hear like from, I could hear from the bathroom, where's the tall boy? And I'm like, in the, oh gosh, I'm in the toilet. Anyway, so it started off very, and we actually had a conversation once we were dating officially, uh, I was more sort of welcome at the house, but you know, with reservations and, and uh, I would call him uncle because that's what you do when you're a brown guy, you just, everybody's an uncle. If they're 10 or more years older than you, they're an uncle. So uncle would, you know, try to sit me down and say like, you know, you're Muslim, it's not good, you, something different. Then he did that thing that, you know, I didn't think was gonna happen to me. He did that thing where some of my best friends are Muslims, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but for my daughter, and he tried to put it like, you'll see when you were older, the kids, it's important. He didn't have a command of the language. <laughs> he would just kind of throw words and you had to sort of pick them up and assemble them yourselves. 
Well, basically what he was saying is that this is an ill-advised uh, venture you're going on with my daughter. <laughs> and uh, basically we, we, went, we went through with it. And, and, and there came a time when uh, myself and uncle had a very positive relationship and, and to the point where I remember I sent him a Valentine's Day card once. That was weird, <laughs> but I thought he'd get a laugh out of it. Um, I would listen to his jokes. His jokes were not, again, no command of the language. So I would listen to the joke. He, so one, this is one of his classics. He would start with, the, so Ali, there is lady. And then his daughter, Tina, would be like, Daddy already knows that one. Doesn't matter, it's a good joke. <laughs> There's lady. She's standing in the rain. She's having umbrella. There's a misunderstanding. And then he would, ah, that's the whole thing. And I'm not much of a fake laugher, but I would fake smile like a motherfucker. I would be like that. Uh, anyway. So that, just to illustrate, that's where we were. He's telling me jokes, we're enjoying each other's company. And we got to the point where uh, my parents had been invited to her parents' house and we were talking about us getting engaged and making plans for our future together. And the girl who I you know, developed this crush on um, was gonna be my wife. And that was in the, in the, you know, in the, just months away. And then one day, and I was living in Hamilton at the time, I'd started doing my masters, and Tina was in both in Montreal and Toronto. She was working for Air Canada, and so we, we're, it was a long distance relationship, but we would meet regularly at least once a week because she could fly anywhere. One day, I come to find out that her sister, who had been dating, let's call her uh, Gina, for uh, Gina and Tina. So uh, <laughs> she had been dating somebody uh, of, of the same religion, there was a Sikh guy, for five years. And so he had finally got the guts to tell his parents and introduce his parents. To, uh, to Tina's younger sister. They have a nice evening out. She leaves, everything's great. And then this guy's mother says to him, you will marry that. He says, oh, this is the girl I want to marry. And she says, that is the girl you will marry over our dead body. And he says, why? What's wrong with her? There's nothing wrong with her. He, she said, yes. We heard that her older sister, Tina, is dating a Muslim boy. We do not want to have anything to do with that family. And these two sisters, how close they were, I mean, I can't fully, so they shared a bed till they were in their 20s, not just a room, a bed. Like they, they lived, like they were, they were two peas in a pod. And once that happened, that was it. That was the end. Of, I mean, my own girlfriend was not returning my calls. Her mother would come in and say, yeah, and she's in Winnipeg. I'm like, she cannot be in Winnipeg. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I can hear her breathing in the background. She may be crying, actually. There's somebody there. And that was it. And that was literally the end of it. My... My girlfriend would never subject her sister to, to that. She couldn't ruin her sister's relationship on account of me, despite what we had. Um, but I don't, there's not a good way to wrap this up, really. Uh, <laughs> but, um, however, and so on and so forth. So uh, in the end, <laughs> and in summary, um, <laughs> uh, Incredible chapter of my life, regardless of what, how it ended. Uh, with the spirit of openness with which you go into a crush, I think should be there all the time because you need that openness to welcome uh, the healing when you do get crushed by the heavy hand uh, of, uh, of love. Uh, so that's my story of, uh, of my crush. Thank you very much. I'm Ali Hassan.